Abididos. Because I be did those no kind of one training here. It is make a first one and person making sure say make an year and I say I be did those. One more time I be did those. Thank God. Shall we be please seated? I bring you greetings from our chairman, Apostle Eric. Nyameche. He actually wanted to be here and he loved to be here personally. But um, some other assignments that are very equally important have taken him somewhere else. And so he says that when I come, I should bring him, I should bring to you his greetings. And then to let you know that even though physically he's not here, his heart and his mind is with you. Amen. I'm happy also to see Mama Nyameche around and then Mama Deborah also around and then the leadership as well. This morning we have received three prophetic messages. The first one said that I called you here to fulfill my promise in you. Yeah. So just open up and be um, be have an expectation. Expect that God will do something for you because he called you here just to fulfill a promise. Then the second one also said that you have been blessed among women. Uh, the fact that you have been here, God has blessed you even among women. And that if you will continue to stand firm, he would also continue to bless you. And the final one said that he has made you like an oak tree. And as an oak tree, you are supposed to uh, uh, give shelter to other people and that he said you will not die and that you blossom and you will do well. God richly bless you. Shall we please rise to our feet? Let's stand to our feet. And you nyam ka nyam ye so And you nyam ka Wasu So And you nyam ka Nyam ye Wasu And you time and you shall we lift up our hands unto him and you yeah let's say and you yam ka of the chairman of the Church of Pentecost Apostle Eric Yamiche, I declare this maiden edition of Abidido's conference duly launched in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. 
May you have an encounter with the Spirit of God in this conference. May the Spirit of God hover over you in this conference. May the Lord plant something new in you. May you be transformed onto another person. May you leave this place as a person with the sharper skills even to the glory of God. Father, we commit these meetings into your hands. May we have an encounter with you. May this not be one of the many conferences that we have attended. But may in this conference, may we experience you. And may we live as people whose skills have been sharpened, Amen. even to go and make an impact. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's put our heads together for the Lord as we sit. I want to specially commend the leadership of the women ministry under the leadership for Mrs. Philomena Mreku for this bold initiative. They have done well. Looking at the numbers here, looking at the organization, looking at everything. And so we want to bless the name of the Lord for their lives and want to honor them as well. Amen. As we begin this conference, I want to speak briefly on the theme for the conference. Repositioning ladies with skill set for maximum impact in the local church. Repositioning ladies with skills set for maximum impact in the local church. And in the next few minutes, I want to bring to the fore the lives of some women who have had impact in their world, what they possessed, and then we shall pick some lessons from their lives. Now let me begin by saying this, that one of God's purposes for his children on earth is for his children to have an impact on their generation. Yeah. It is the purpose of God for each and every one of us to have impact on our generation and to have impact in our world. It is never his expectation for us to live through this world, to walk through this world without affecting our generation and even generation beyond us. So God is expecting you and I, as his children, to be people who have an impact in our generation and the generations beyond. When I say that God expects his children to make an impact, those children of God I'm talking about include women. They include women. And so when I say that God is expecting his children to have an impact in their world, in other words, I'm talking about you as a woman, that God is expecting you as a woman to live a life that is impactful, to, live, to have an impact in your society, to have an impact on your world. Listen carefully. We weren't created just to consume resources. God didn't create us to come into this world just to consume resources, just to eat, just to breathe, and just to have, to occupy space. No. God specially designed you to make a difference with your life. God didn't create us to be ordinary in this world. He didn't create us 
just to occupy space in this world, just to eat and to drink and to breathe and to walk through this world. No. But you and I were specially designed. We were uniquely designed so we can make a difference in our world. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. So God took his time to create you and God took his time to design you. You are never a mistake. You are never a mistake. You are never an afterthought. You are never a second thought. You have always been in the plans of God. And he created you and he designed you. He designed you as a woman. A woman of purpose. A woman to make a difference in your life and in society. For me, making that difference is one of the meanings of impact. So when I say that God created you to have an impact, one of the things that I want to draw attention to is that God created you to make a difference in your world, to make a difference in your society. You are not an ordinary person. You are not an ordinary woman. You are a child of God. You were designed for a purpose. You were designed to make a difference. You are designed to make an impact. Can I hear amen, church? And I hope you are understanding me. That we have been specially designed and created in Christ Jesus for good works. And these good works, the Bible says that were prepared beforehand. Even before you were conceived. Even before you were born into this world. God had you in mind and had designed you for a purpose. And had designed you to make a difference. And that making that difference is one of the meanings of making an impact. People of God, if you examine scriptures very well, you will find out that many women of the biblical time had great impact on their society and in their world. But I'm happy to also say that it is not only in biblical times, but even in our times today, we can identify women who have made an impact and who continue to make impact even on the societies and in the generations. But I, walk, I want to walk you through the Bible a bit to show you a few of these women in scriptures who made impact on their society and then we can draw some lessons from them. And then I'll be, I want to mention some of the women we are very familiar with. Some of the women we talk about. In fact, the Abidido women, yeah. I want to talk about some of them. But let me start with Deborah. This is a woman who led a whole nation to war and brought victory to the people of Israel. A woman that led a whole nation to war. When men were sleeping and men were hiding somewhere, this woman led a whole nation to war and then brought victory to the people of Israel. The Bible says that in the days of Shamgar, son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highway was abandoned. And so in those days, people were even afraid to walk through the highways of Israel. They were afraid because of their enemies. They were afraid to walk through the highways because they could be attacked. Men had become women. And we are all hiding in our rooms. Nobody was ready to come out because of our enemies, because of the enemies of the people of Israel. And the Bible says that the high streets were abandoned and travelers had to keep to the byways. And so if you were to travel, if you had to go somewhere, you had to use some corner, corner road. You could not use the highway because of the dangers, because of the, of the enemies, because of the presence of the enemies. And that was the situation of the time. The Bible says that the villages ceased in Israel. There was no life in Israel. Villages had ceased. There was no activity. And it continued until one day a person arose. And the Bible says that 
the villagers ceased in Israel, they ceased to be until I arose. And until who arose? Until Deborah arose as a mother in Israel. I pray in the name of Jesus that we shall be women of Deborah and we shall arise in our nation and we shall arise in our families and we shall arise as mothers. The Bible says that and Deborah arose as a mother and when Deborah arose as a mother the situation changed. He led a whole nation into war and brought victory to Israel. Now the lesson I want to bring across is this that through the act of bravery of Deborah, she impacted her world. She impacted her world through the act of bravery. I am praying in the name of Jesus that this spirit of bravery will be activated in your life. That you shall leave this conference as a woman who has been empowered. A woman who has been energized. A woman who has been challenged. And your bravery, that spirit of bravery activated in your life that you will go out there and also lead your nation against poverty. That you will go out there and also lead your nation against any other kind of social vice because Deborah arose as a mother and by her act of bravery she, she impacted her society. By her act of bravery she changed situation in her life. May the spirit of bravery be activated even in the heart of someone who is hearing my voice, that you shall not walk in fear again, but you shall walk out there in boldness. And so we see Deborah, who impacted her society, who impacted her nation because of her bravery. Let's look at a woman like Abigail. This is a woman who saved her husband, Nabal, from death by her wisdom and counsel. When David attempted to go and kill Nabal, the husband of Abigail, the Bible says that by the wisdom of Abigail and by the counsel of Abigail, she saved her husband. But not only did she save her husband, she, by the same wisdom and counsel, saved David from committing murder. And so through Abigail, somebody's life was spared. And through Abigail, at the same time, somebody was prevented from committing murder through wisdom and counsel of Abigail. The Bible says that, and this is a confession of David himself. David said to Abigail, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who sent you this day to meet me. I am praying that this shall be said about you. That one day somebody will stand up and say, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel that you came into my life. That somebody will stand up and say, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel that I encountered you. That somebody will stand up and say, That blessed be the Lord God of Israel that I met you. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel that I married you. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel that I employed you into my business. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel that you came into my home. And so David was saying that, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel who sent you this day to meet me. Blessed be your discretion. Blessed be your wisdom. And blessed be you who have kept me this day from blood guilt and from working salvation with my own hand. And so if David had not met the counsel and the wisdom of Abigail, two things would have happened. The Nabal, Nabal the husband of the, um, um, Abigail, would have died. And not only that, David would have committed murder. But thanks be unto God that one day, the Bible says that they, Abigail encountered David and because of the wisdom and the counsel of Abigail, Bible says that the life of Nabal was saved and at the same time, David was prevented from committing murder. The lesson here is this, that through wisdom and through good counsel, Abigail impacted her society. Through wisdom and through good counsel, 
Abigail made a difference in the life of the society, in their life. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus that as you sit here, as you leave this conference, may you go as a woman full of wisdom, full of good counsel, that when you speak, wisdom will come out of your mouth. That when you speak, good counsel will come out of your mouth. When you talk to your husband, your husband will see wisdom in what you are saying. When you talk to your children, your children will say, this is a good counsel. May you all go out of this conference reformed with full of wisdom. And by that we can have an impact. Can I hear amen, church? And so Abigail made a difference in her society, in her life by her good wisdom and good counsel. Let's move into the New Testament. And we see a lady as Dorcas who had so much impact on her generation with her good deeds so much so that even when she had died, the people refused to let her go. She has so much impact on her society. She has so much impact on the people around her. She made a difference in her life to the extent that even when she had died, the people refused to let her dead body even go to the grave because of the impact. The Bible says that now there was Joppa, a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. Ah, may this be said about you. That this woman is full of good works. That this woman is full of charity. So the Bible says that she was good, full of good works and of charity. Verse 37. In those days, she became ill and died. And when they had washed her, Instead of taking her to the grave or instead of taking her to the cemetery, the Bible says that when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lida was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, please come to us without delay. Hurry up. Something has happened. A woman of impact has gone to be with the Lord. But we are not ready to let her go. So come, come, come. Come quickly. Come to us. Don't delay. The Bible says that. So Peter rose and went with them. And when he had arrived, they took him to the upper room. But something unique happened. The Bible says that all the widows stood beside him, weeping, and not only weeping, but they were showing the tonics and other garments that Dorcas had made while she was with them. What a testimony. What an impact. That she died all right. But instead of taking her to the grave, they said, we won't take her to the grave. We have heard that Peter is just around there. Go and bring Peter. Let Peter come. When Peter came, they were all standing around the corpse of, of, of Dorcas. And they were holding their garments. They were holding the tonics that she has sewn onto them. And the Bible says that they were weeping. What an impact. And here, I want to bring this one lesson out. That Dorcas also affected her generation. Dorcas also impacted her generation. She had maximum impact. She made a difference in her life through her acts of generosity. Through her charitable acts. Through her, 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 her kindness, may you also leave this conference going out there to become charitable. May you also leave this conference going out there to become a woman who is kind. That it shall be said of you that that's woman. It shall be said of you by your husband. Your husband can look at you and say that this woman, this my wife, is full of good works and is full of charity. That your father will look at you, your mother will look at you, your brother will look at you, and will say that this, my daughter, is unique. She is full of good works and full of charity. Can I hear amen, church? 
Maybe the last woman that I will talk about for the sake of time is Priscilla. And the Bible says that Priscilla was a woman who risked her life together with her husband for the work of God. She risked her life. She impacted her world by risking her life for the work of God. Greet Priscilla, and this is Paul writing. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ, who risked their necks for my life. They virtually broke their necks for my life. To whom not only I give thanks, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. And so this is Priscilla who served God and served humanity to the extent that she put her life at risk just for the work of God. Now the lesson here is that Priscilla impacted her generation through her selflessness and through her sacrifice. She was selfless. A selfless lady, she was a woman who was ready to make sacrifices. She was a woman who sacrificed together with her husband and she was selfless. And the Bible says that Paul said that this woman risked her life for my sake. Can I hear amen? amen? Now, listen carefully, people of God. It can be deduced from all that we have said so far that this woman impacted their generations and their peers or they made a difference in their times because they possessed something. They possessed some skills. They possessed some traits. In other words, these four women that we have mentioned and other women in scriptures who impacted their generation, who made a difference in their time, were people who had something unique or something unique was identified with each one of them. Deborah, act of bravery. In Deborah, we see boldness. We see bravery. In Abigail, we see wisdom and good counsel. In Dorcas, we see good deeds. We see acts of charity. And I believe that we can also see good interpersonal skills. In Prisla, we see selflessness and sacrifice. And so we can therefore deduce, people of God, that one of the prerequisites for a woman to have a maximum impact in her generation is the possession of something unique which is called skill. I will say that again. If you look at this woman that we have mentioned and there are many others in scriptures that for the sake of time we cannot mention, you will see that each and every one of them possessed something. They were able to make an impact. They were able to make a difference in their time, in their life because they possessed something unique. And I'm saying that in Deborah, we see acts of bravery. In Abigail, we see wisdom and good counsel. In Dorcas, we see good deeds, acts of charity. And I also believe that we see interpersonal skills. And then in Priscilla, we see selflessness and sacrifice. If what I have said is true, then we can deduce that one of the prerequisites for any woman, whether an elderly woman, or a young lady, but any woman, one of the prerequisites for you to have a maximum impact is the possession of something unique, which is called skill. In fact, there may be other prerequisites. But for the purpose of what we are studying today, I just want to limit it to skill. So one unique thing that you need 
as a young lady or as an elderly lady, as a woman in leadership, one of the things that you need is skill. If you want to have a maximum impact, if you want to make a difference in your society and wherever you are, one thing that I believe you need is skill. Now, when I talk of skills, what do I mean? Skill is the ability to do something well. It is the ability to do something, but not just doing something, but doing it well. It is an expertise. When I checked the dictionary, the Cambridge dictionary, it says that it is an ability to do an activity or a job well. Especially because you have practiced it. So, you have been trained for it. You have practiced it and you are able to do it and do it well. Now, what it implies is this. It implies that the one who is careful has knowledge or has acquired knowledge about something he's able to do and he's able to do it so well that when you are looking for anybody so far as that thing is concerned, it is that person that will come to mind. And so even if it is in Chewie, you should do your in Chewie in such a way that even when we are looking for anybody who can do in Chewie, you are the person whose name will come to mind. If it is the preparation of Sobolo, if it is the preparation of liquid soap, if it is the whatever, you should do your own in such a way that if we are looking for one person to who would be able to do that, no other person's name will come to mind but you. So it implies that that person has something he's doing and he's doing it so well. Therefore, to make a difference in life or to have an impact, you must have something you are doing with your life. The Bible says that the one who is like a tree that is planted by the riverside, whatever he does will prosper. So you must do something for that to be prospered. And so for you to have an impact, you must be doing something. My prayer is this. As we are re being repositioned as ladies with skill sets for maximum impact, I am praying that in this conference, we will learn a skill. Oh, you didn't hear me, church. I am saying that may you acquire some skills in this conference. Because you need that skill to be able to make an impact. You need that skill to be able to make a difference. And so I'm saying that in this conference, may you acquire some skills. In this conference, may you, the skills that you have, may it be sharpened. May you live here as a woman with a sharpened skills. So we can go out there and make a difference and we shall be repositioned for maximum impact. I'll be finishing very soon. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. God has already deposited a kind of skills which is unique to you, in you already. As you sit here, you are not an empty vessel. No, you are not an empty vessel. There is already something unique that God has already deposited in you. There is something unique to you, some skills that God has put. So when you look at the life of Bezalel and Oholiab, Moses said, then Moses said to the people of Israel, see, the Lord has called by name Bezalel, the son of Uriah and son of her, of the tribe of Judah. He has filled him with the spirit of God with skill, with intelligence. So already, God has filled Bezalel with skill. And I want to pronounce over you that as you sit here, already, God has deposited some skills in you. But I pray that in this conference, God will open your eye that you will see that skill. And that skill that you have will be sharpened. The Bible says that, but we have this treasure in this jar of clay. This is the jar of clay. 
the human being is just, we were made out of the dust of the ground. And so we are just jars of clay. But God created us out of the dust and then deposited something in us. And that which is in you is a skill that is unique to you. It's a skill that is yours. And may your eyes be open onto that skill so we can have an impact. People of God, the skillful woman have so many opportunities. The simple woman, the skillful woman. In Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29, the New International Version and the English Standard Version put it very interesting. It says that, do you see a man, but in this case, let me say a woman. Do you see a woman skillful in his work? That person who is skillful will stand before kings. And he will not stand before obscure men. He will not stand before mere men. But he will stand before skills. I came to encourage you that your skills will bring you before kings. Your skills will open doors for you. Uh, there are people who may never have traveled before. But skills open doors for them. For them to travel outside. There are some people who may never have come before the president before. But skills open door for them. I came to announce to you. And I came to encourage somebody. That if only you will sharpen your skills. That skill will open doors for you. And by that skills you will appear before men. You appear before kings. Yes. You will not stand before ordinary men. Hallelujah. No, you will not be an ordinary man. But when kings are looking for men and women who are skillful, when kings are looking for people mm. to do something for them, yes. when kings are looking for people, yes. they will say, go to that yeah. village. Kabasa. Go to that village in Asamankase. Yeah. Go to that village in Yanoa. Yes. Go to that village in uh, Brekumaso. Yes. They will say, go there. Aye. Bring that woman. Bring that woman. Mm. She has something we need. May your skills open doors for you. Man. May your Aye. skills Aye. bring you before men. Man. May you go there with a sharpened skill. Please stay for a moment. Stay. Mama Director, I'm ending. I'm ending. I'm ending. There is a woman in scriptures whose name we don't know but I see her to be a woman of skills and that woman is described and it's a scripture woman ministry you like pa who can, who can guess Proverbs 31 <laughs> there is a woman there whose name was not mentioned but this is a woman full of skills Let's go to Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10 downwards. An excellent wife who can find. She's more precious than jewels. Now let's jump to verse 13. 13 says that she seeks wool and flax and works with willing hand. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. This is a woman who is careful. A woman who will not sit down unconcerned. No, but she will not sit down unconcerned. But she will seek wool and flax and works with willing hands. Verse 15. This skillful woman will rise while it is yet night. Even when everybody is sleeping, this woman will cut short her sleep and will arise when it is still night. Why? To provide food for her household and portions for her maidens. 16. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruits of her hands, she plants vineyard. She is skillful even in farming. She is skillful even in trading. And so when you look at it, he says that she, she is like ships of merchants. She, she brings her food 
no, no, verse 16. She considers a field and buys it. So when it comes to trading, she is skillful. But not only trading, but the Bible says that with the fruits of her hands, she plants vineyards. So when it comes to farming, she's, she's multi, multi-skilled. She's not, she's not skilled in only one area, but she is multi-skilled. So she knows how to change her way. She knows how to prepare sobolo. She knows how to prepare liquid soap. She knows how to. She, she, she is multi. Everywhere you put her, she is there. That is a woman who is skillful. Verse 25. Verse 25. Strength and dignity are her clothing. And she laughs at the time to come. Because she is skillful. Before the time comes, she's already laughing. Because she knows that she is prepared. She knows what to do. She knows what she can do. And so before the time comes, she's even laughing. Verse 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on his tongue. In this message, people of God, I have tried to establish that women can make an impact. But you need a skill. It, your skill will propel you to have an impact. I've also tried to establish the fact that it is not now that God is going to put any skill in you. It is already in you. You were created with it. But what you need to do is to have your eyes open. And if you already know it, sharpen it. Because that skill will open doors for you and will bring you before kings. May we leave this conference poised to have maximum impact because we have been repositioned with skill set and that we go out there. In fact, may it happen that in the next few, near future when a book is written or when history is being said, when your family meets to recount the family history, your name will be mentioned as a woman who has had an impact but your skill is important. God bless you.